In some, the sacraments do something. What do they do? They enact the work of image restoration and image perfection. That is, they provide the way that Christ makes sons out of images. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the sacraments are divided into sacraments of healing and sacraments of initiation into and at the service of communion. Image restoration, as the phrase suggests, brings about healing. Whereas image perfection creates and serves communion. Beatific fellowship or communion finds its anticipation here below in the Eucharist. The Eucharist introduces the theme of charity and communion. Only the saints love one another in a bond of authentic friendship. Sinners do not. When he comments on Summa Theologiae Secunda Secundae, question 25, article 7, which inquires whether sinners love themselves, the much maligned Cardinal Cajetan tells us why they don't. It's my translation. It's a bit wooden. God in your heart, the conclusions of this article, 7 of 25, Secunda Secundae. First, that evil is the kind of thing that makes it impossible for sinners to love themselves. Two, that there are five signs of authentic self-love which can only be found in the good. First, to want to live a spiritual life in accord with right reason. Second, to want to develop within this life the good of virtue. Three, to want to act so as to realize this. That's prudence command. You can't just, you know, plan it. You have to do it. To be free of anxiety, which, by the way, comes along with virtue, and to want to get along peacefully with others. Examine your conscience, says Cajetan, on these points. If you want to know whether you are good or not, whether you truly love yourself, whether you truly are a friend to yourself. And do this frequently, at least, at least once a day. End of quotation. These considerations, indeed the spiritual advice, hardly seems to come from someone you would describe as fixated on essentialism. The practice of the divine friendship follows upon Aquinas' teaching on the tripartite models of the Imago Dei and his very strong teaching on sacramental causality. What else can explain how fallen human beings can rise up and become authentic lovers of God and neighbor? One of the criticisms that should be made by Thomists of what I call inclusivist theologies that is, those theologies that take umbrage at nature and grace distinctions, is that the promoters of these outlooks, whether stridently orthodox or shadowy heterodox, take too much for granted when it comes to explaining the dynamics of conversion. Leave aside the orthodox inclusivists, who in any event are usually loyal to what the church prescribes for the moral life, and we find ourselves left with the widespread presumption promoted by the shadowy heterodox. When one reflects on the list of things that those who profess themselves to be Catholics hold to be compatible with Christian truth and virtue, it is stupefying, especially if you've lived in Boston for the past decade. I would make every dissenting moral theologian read Cajetan's commentary on whether sinners can love themselves. What today is the importance of the doctrine of the image of God for Catholic life? How would I expound on the intuition expressed more than 50 years ago in this house by Father Ferris Smith? It would run something like this. We are made for happiness with God but our capacity to achieve the realization of this beatitude 
whether inchoatively on earth or consummatively in heaven, depends on the absolute priority of the divine initiative. That's an important phrase for the students, Dominicans. You're gonna, you promise your whole life to preaching that. God loves us because he is good, not because we are. And the divine prevenient grace that governs all that transpires in the world for the good moves the human creature to the Church of Christ and to baptism, which remains the only way that the Church knows to introduce a human creature made in the image of God into the fellowship of divine friendship. The 2000 Declaration Dominus Jesus reaffirms the advantages that one finds only within the circle of full communion with the See of Peter present Holy Father's hand, it seems to me, was evident in that reference effectively to Mr. G. Corporis as he contemplated the uh, relativizing effects of some of the movements, such as the ecumenical movement, that at one time would have seemed to hold out promise. Baptism, as Aquinas says, is the door to the other sacrament. A sacramental mediation marks every step of the Christian life and of the spiritual life. At the center of this communion, one embraces the Eucharist, the sacrament of unity and charity. When Aquinas inquires whether it is fitting that the new law contain certain specific counsels, he refers to the book of Proverbs 27.9. The good counsels of a friend are sweet to the soul. Aquinas wanted to conclude that specific counsels are fitting for the new law, and so he chooses a middle term for the argument that provides one of the best lines in the whole Summa Theologiae. Said Christus maxime est sapiens et amicus. Christ is the wisest and best friend. Amen. Amen. This short text encapsulates the message that Aquinas would want us to take away tonight. To return to another text that I cited earlier in this presentation, St. Thomas would want, would encourage us, I believe, to maintain an amata notitia, that would be a good STL topic. <clears throat> the amata notitia, a loving awareness, consciousness of the presence of Christ in our lives. Right, Brian? Well, we all grow. <laughs> it changes. Consciousness, for some of you may know, in Boston is a word almost exclusively associated with uh, the Lonergan, uh, the school of Father Lonergan. And, uh, and so some of the students from Boston College are surprised to see me introduce it, but this is, this is how theology grows. You go to a foreign land and you come back. <laughs> An amata notitia, a loving awareness, a consciousness sure, of the presence of Christ in our lives. When we maintain the rhythm of abiding in Christ, as one would seek the companionship of a friend. Then we discover the actualization of the image of grace and the divine sonship that Christ shares with the members of his body. In a word, to conclude, we become lovers of virtue and of the word of truth that maintains and strengthens virtue. And within this love of virtue, we discover true friendship with both God and the neighbor. But nothing happens without our affective appropriation of the most important line in the Summa Theologiae. said, Christus, maxime as sapiens et amicus. Christ remains our wisest and best friend. Thank you.